speaker is Mark Spritzer. And uh, I think we say Spritzer, right? Yes. Yeah, okay, make sure I got that right. Um, he is the president of the Beloit City Council. Um, he works for Beloit College in Development and Alumni Relations. And um, Fair Wisconsin Leadership Awards, he was honored for passing uh, domestic partner benefits in Beloit. Uh, give a big hand to Mark. Good evening, I'm Mark Spreitzer, and uh, as Chuck said, I'm president of the Floyd City Council. I'm running for state assembly for the 45th district because in the time that I've been on the city council, I've seen the effects that state policies have had on our communities, and I think we need to make some changes. I first got into politics because I really grew up with uh, an awareness of the issues and the fact that government should be making people's lives better, it should be there to make sure that people who are working hard have a fair shake in life, have opportunities, and I grew up with, my mom was a social worker. She's retired now, but when I grew up, we would sit around the kitchen table and uh, talk about how her day was at work. And I would hear stories of some of the people that uh, she encountered and the challenges that they were facing, just trying to live their lives and have the opportunities that they deserve to have and some of the roadblocks that our society puts up. And I believe that politics is a, a chance for us to change that and a chance to make sure the government is working for real people. So I grew up uh, with an understanding of some of those issues and got involved uh, voting as soon as I was old enough to and volunteering on local campaigns for people who were fighting for the issues that I believed in. And when I went to college in Beloit, which was how I came to be here, I got involved during that time in local campaigns in the city for school district and city council and making sure that we elected progressive candidates. Uh, and I actually helped when Sheila first ran for uh, city council because I saw her as a progressive candidate. We agree on many of the issues. That's really uh, how I got involved in politics and uh, as I did more campaigns, I uh, ended up graduating from Beloit College in 2009 and uh, my first job out of school was working on Russ Feingold's 2010 re-election campaign. And that was here in Rock County and also in Walworth County, just trying to organize volunteers to go out and knock on doors and talk to voters and get him reelected because he really shared the values that I believe were important. And unfortunately, he didn't get elected. And I was trying to figure out where do we go from here as progressives? Uh, how do I try to carry that torch forward? And a seat was opening up on the Boy City Council, and I had been getting involved in council issues through talking to people who were already on the council and was aware of of many of the issues that were facing Beloit, and I decided to run for that seat. Uh, it was uh, quite an interesting campaign, uh, several candidates uh, running, uh, seven of us for three spots. I ended up getting elected and been on the council for just over three years now. That was in 2011 that I was elected to the city council. And in that time, I've really enjoyed getting my hands dirty with the issues that are facing our community and working to try to solve those and make sure that we're providing the services we need to our residents, that we're addressing their concerns when they come forward. And that's something that I very much enjoy and, again, feel that government should be about. A year after I was elected to the council, my colleagues unanimously elected me council vice president and re-elected me as council vice president the year after that. I was elected council president, again without opposition, just this past April, and have been serving in that role for the past two months. One of the things that I think sets me apart uh, in my service on the council is that I've really been able to build those relationships with my colleagues, whether or not we agree on every issue, in order to be in, in put into leadership and to really have the respect and support that it takes to get votes done. And on the city council, we've got seven of us. It takes four votes to get anything done. And ideally, we like to have five or six so that it doesn't become one of those really controversial issues. Uh, Chuck mentioned domestic partner benefits, and that was an issue that I led on and brought forward first to the city manager because I knew that getting him on board would be critical if we wanted to have this go down smoothly, and brought it up and started a series of conversations with him that took place for over a year before it really came forward in a public way, and uh, also had some private conversations uh, with other people who might be supportive of it, and then brought it forward at a city council strategic planning workshop, uh, which was one of the opportunities we have to, to bring up issues to our colleagues. There was some support for it, but also some hesitation from some of the staff. And we worked through and eventually got that done in a six to one vote, which was something that I was very proud of. Uh, would have loved to be unanimous, but, uh, but we ended up getting six votes for it, and, uh, and that was something that, that I really appreciated. 
a majority of my city council colleagues are supporting me in this campaign, and I think that that's a testament to what they see as my ability to work with people and to really be effective in that legislative environment. And that's one of the things that I think is critical for our next representative in Madison. Uh, whoever we send to represent the 45th district is going to be one of 99, and within the Democratic caucus, one of fewer than that. It's going to be important both within the Democratic caucus to be respected by leadership, to have the support of colleagues and those allies, to get things on the agenda. And it's also going to be important to work across the aisle and find the Republican colleagues who are willing to team up on an issue and try to get something done. And that might mean that we don't put our own name on it because then they can't vote for it, and that's fine with me. It's not about who gets the credit. It's about making sure that we do something right for the people of this district and the people of the state of Wisconsin. I think I have a proven record of doing that, and I already have relationships with some of the members in the assembly, and would be able to hit the ground running with mentors and allies and people who are prepared to work with me to do what we need for the 45th district. In terms of some of the issues I'm running on, as I said, the time I've been on council, there have been a number of things that have happened that I think we need to change. And one of those is that the state has consistently either cut or frozen funding for local governments. Uh, and that's not just cities, it's villages and towns, and we've seen the effects of that on our local services. On police officers and firefighters, which we've had to cut in Beloit, on road repair, which every town chair that I've talked to across the district has mentioned as the number one issue. We've seen the effects on our school districts and our counties that provide those basic services that we count on in education, in health care, transportation, senior services. And I think that when we look at the state budget, which will be one of the first things that comes up for the next legislative session, we need to make sure that we're funding those local priorities, that we're funding our local governments that know where those dollars need to be spent. And unfortunately, on the city council, we've had to make cuts instead of funding the priorities that we need because the state is not sending those dollars our way. I would restore that funding and make sure that we do that. And I would also make sure that we restore some of the local control that's been taken away from our communities so that we can decide in our city, in our town, in our county, in our schools, what's best for our community and where those resources need to be directed. I also want to do more to create jobs. Certainly, uh, that's got to be one of the number one issues here. We still have far too high unemployment rate, but I think we need to make sure that we're focusing on jobs that pay a living wage, that support our communities, and that means growing our own, supporting small businesses, and focusing when we are bringing companies in, again, on jobs that are going to pay a living wage. We need to raise the minimum wage, and I think we need to invest in our communities because the kind of companies that we want coming in or starting themselves in this area are not the ones that just care about the bottom line and having the lowest tax rate. They're the ones that care about high quality schools, high quality parks, public safety, good functional municipal government. Those are the communities that they want to live in, that they want their workers to live in, and I think those are the kind of businesses that are going to stay here for the long haul and really make a positive impact on our communities. On education, we need to make sure that we're keeping funding in our public school system. I did not support the expansion of vouchers statewide. I think that's taking money out of the public schools and putting it into private schools without the same accountability standards. And I want to make sure we treat our teachers fairly along with the rest of our public employees. And that's something that hasn't been done the past few years. I want to expand access to health care, and the very first step of that is making sure that as a state we accept the federal money to expand Badger Care. We should be taking that to make sure that we add people to Badger Care, not kicking people off of it. Two other things to mention. I absolutely support nonpartisan redistricting reform. I think that's a critical thing that we need, and looking at the map of the 45th district, you can see the effects of gerrymandering. Having Beloit split into two districts, having Green County split into three districts, when they used to be together. And I think that's wrong, and it makes for uncompetitive elections, and it keeps one party in power instead of giving voters the power. So I would absolutely do nonpartisan reform there. Another thing that I'm passionate about is protecting our environment and making sure that we have clean air to breathe, clean water, and that our public lands in Wisconsin are protected. Tourism is a huge industry here. Uh, we all like to go out and, and breathe the air and play and get on the water. That's something that I've been committed to in Beloit, and it's something that I think the state is committed to and should be, but again, we've seen policies the past couple of years that are taking us in the wrong direction, and I would work to reverse that. So those are some of the reasons I'm running, and I would certainly appreciate your vote on August 12th, and enjoy taking your questions.